I'm convinced that we are at the cusp of a transformational moment in transportation policy and investment, largely because of the American Jobs Plan, which puts forward uh, the resources and just as importantly, the policies that we would need to modernize every aspect of our transportation system. The jobs plan would also fund a new program to reconnect neighborhoods cut off by past transportation decisions, often federally funded decisions, and it will increase equity in future outcomes while reducing pollution and emissions in many cases. By the way, preparing for AVs is as much about uh, smart roadways as it is smart vehicles. In fact, in many ways, uh, it's really there that we would want to begin so that we could establish kind of corridors where, at least on the commercial side, you could accelerate uh, adoption. The president's plan would create millions of good jobs, retrofitting buildings, installing electric vehicle chargers, laying new transit lines, expanding rail to new communities, all steps that also ultimately reduce carbon emissions. And these are jobs that pay enough to support a family. And the majority will be available to people whether they have a college degree or not. So the American Jobs Plan is showing how infrastructure, climate, equity, job creation all go hand in hand. A great example here is electric vehicles. We know their, their clear and revolutionary climate impact. I will look forward to working with Mayor Buttigieg to make sure that those charging stations are installed along the, uh, rights, the federal rights of way on, along highways, et cetera. And, and just as sort of a separate uh, matter from that, I, I think it's important for us to think about digging once and also potentially using those rights of way uh, if we have to ground grid uh, transmission wires or if we have to, if we would like to get broadband to rural communities, those are opportunities while that is happening. Cities and communities are collaborating and forming PPPs. They're creating new policies and they're innovating in street furniture. Focusing on publicly is we're focusing on autonomous systems. And uh, clearly one purpose of autonomous systems is self-driving cars. There are others. Uh, and we sort of see it as the mother of all AI projects. Today is wireless infrastructure generally looks like a tower in a city, a couple hundred people connected to that tower at any given point in time to do the things that they're doing on their smartphones. What 5G is gonna do is take that one tower, which has probably hundreds of people using it at exactly the same time, and turn that into one small node. Instead of having hundreds of people riding that same node, it's gonna be 40 or 50 people riding that same node. So it's gonna allow more people to do more of what they wanna do at any given moment in time, which as a result creates massive infrastructure demand on cities. It's gonna require more fiber in cities. It's gonna require the wireless carriers and anyone who's putting out 5G technology to have access to more spectrum than what's available today. But it's also a very municipal task. You have to go to each city and say, hey, I wanna dig up Park Avenue and, and put some fiber in the street and I wanna hang some fiber from a lamp pole. So it's a really manual and laborious exercise, but something that in general, the communication providers are very bullish about doing over the course of the next 10 years. We also think that eventually over time, the more rural communities will also see a version of this. And so in more rural towns where you don't have big buildings and you don't have mountains and things of that nature, it's actually easier to build a wireless network in that town than it is in New York City. For a lot of the biggest trends in technology that we hear about, edge computing is gonna be a necessity. So there are a lot of use cases for edge computing, some of which are starting to be in use today. For example, in autonomous driving, from all of these exciting technologies that are gonna change the world that we live in on a daily basis, I think of edge computing as playing a pivotal role. And in my view, it's not a matter of if that happens, it's just a matter of when. There is a growing sentiment that Data is the new oil, which means that it's going to be the place where nation states compete. And it'll be something that, you know, the United States has some catch up to do. I think we need to go ahead and provide ubiquitous high speed broadband across the whole country, make the same commitment that Franklin Roosevelt made in the 1930s with rural electrification. We can do that now. I think there are things that we should be doing during the pandemic where we actually allow existing Internet service providers to turn up the power so there's additional relief provided. Uh, when I hear the telecom industry talk about it, they're not really talking about 5G. 5G is not really about um, faster speeds 
Um, it's really about building an industrial internet that provides for automation, self-driving cars, industry 4.0. That's the challenge that we face today. So, I mean, if you really want to make um, you, you know, your country competitive in the, for the future, you're going to have to look at this more as a national strategic investment and, and somehow stimulate that in, 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 with policy. Spectrum is invisible infrastructure. We may not be able to see it, but it is where we are going to build our economic future.